So now that you know how to draw Lewis structures in two dimensions, we want to talk a little bit about the geometry or shape of these molecules in three dimensions. And in order to do that, we need to use something called VSEPR theory. VSEPR stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion. The learning objectives for this video are these three right here. I want you to take a second, pause the video, and write them down and then restart the video once you've done that. So at least you know what we'll be doing. So we're going to start by taking a look at some of the Lewis structures that we're familiar with. Most of the Lewis structures that we'll be doing are simple molecules. CO2, if you remember the way we drew the Lewis structure for this molecule, we count the number of valence electrons. Carbon has four. There are two oxygens, each oxygen has six, so that's a total of 12 from those two, which means we have 16 electrons that we need to place in the structure. We put the carbon in the middle. The carbon is the central atom because it's written first. So we draw carbon in the middle, we connect it to two oxygens, one on either side in this case. It doesn't really matter where you put them right now. It will in a second. And we've just used two four electrons to do that. So that means we have 12 electrons left that we have to place. We start by putting them around the oxygens because the oxygen is the most electronegative element. So there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Now I'm out of dots. I have no more electrons to place. The electrons around the oxygen are fine. We've got 8 here. We've got 8 here. But the carbon only has 4. It is missing 4 electrons. And I have no more to place. I've placed all 16. We know that what we do in that case is we can take away some of the lone pairs from this oxygen here and this oxygen here, and we can make double bonds between the carbons and the oxygens. Now, how do I know that uh, I'm going to make a double bond here and a double bond here instead of a triple bond on the side and a single bond? There's a number of different ways, but really it comes down to this. Oxygen has, when it's by itself unbonded, it has six electrons, and two of them are unpaired, which means oxygen likes to share two pairs of electrons. It likes to make two bonds. Each oxygen here is forming two bonds, so that's good. Carbon. Carbon has four unpaired electrons, so carbon likes to share four pairs. It likes to form four bonds, and there you go. So the question then is, is this really what this molecule looks like? Are they all in a straight line like that? Could I just as easily have drawn this molecule with uh, an angle, like like this, where I've got what looks to be a 90 degree angle or so between the carbon's bonds here. Uh, and how do we tell which is right? In three dimensions, it comes down to the electrons in the bonds on the central atom and how they push each other apart. Remember, this is called valence shell electron pair repulsion. Repulsion means to push away. So how do these pairs of bonds push away? Well, it depends on what's on the central atom. And for carbon dioxide, on the central atom, on this carbon, we have what are called two electron domains. Now, an electron domain is either a bond or a lone pair. And it doesn't matter if it's a single, double, or triple bond. It's just considered one bond. So on this carbon, I've got two bonds. They happen to both be double bonds, but they're just considered as two bonds coming off the, single, uh, the central atom. So that's two electron domains. Well, if I want to take a look and see what that might look like, here I have a carbon atom in the center, and I'm going to add two doubly bonded atoms to either side of it. And when I do that, I can see that, in fact, if I want to get these two double bonds as far apart from one another in space as I can, then I have to push them 180 degrees apart from one another. That's as far apart as I can get them. See, if I try to push them closer together, they just go right back to 180 degrees. That's the closest I can get, or as far apart as I can get them in three-dimensional space. And so if I want to look at the real molecule of CO2, I see that that's in fact what's going on here. 180 degrees from carbon to oxygen bond over here to this way. Now the name of this shape, the geometry, is called linear. This is called a linear geometry because they're all in a straight line. So linear geometry 
for when you have two electron domains. That's called linear. Now let's take a look at a few other molecules and see what's going to happen as we change the number of domains on the central atom. So we'll start by looking at two molecules. The first one is going to be SO3, sulfur trioxide. I'm not going to go through building the whole Lewis structure. You can do this. You've done it in class. What we come out with for the Lewis structure for SO3 should look something like this. I've got three oxygens attached to the central sulfur. And in order to get the Lewis octet rule to work, I have to have a double bond here between at least one oxygen and the sulfur. So what do I have on my central atom here? I have a bond that's a double bond. That's one domain. I have a bond that's a single bond. That's a second domain. And I have another bond that's a single bond. That's a third domain. So this molecule has three electron domains on its central atom. Okay. So what's this going to look like? Is it really T-shaped like this? Or does it have something else going on? So let's go back to our, our little uh, simulation here. We'll take them all away. Here's my sulfur in the center. I've got to add, uh, I have a double bond, so I'm going to add one of my double bonds. And then I'm going to add the two single bonds like that. And what you'll see is that this molecule, the farthest away that I can get these three bonds, is 120 degrees from one another. So it sort of goes into a triangular shape. And if you turn this thing, you'll see that it's a flat triangle. All four of these atoms are in the same plane. It's a flat triangle. As a matter of fact, its name means flat triangle. Its name is trigonal planar. Trigonal means triangle. Planar means flat. So this molecule should actually be drawn uh, like this where we have the three oxygens in a triangular form. And we have this 120 degree angle in here, which is what you get inside a triangle, 120 degree angle. That's called trigonal. Trigonal means triangular. And planar means flat, because all four atoms are in the same plane, 120 degree bond angle in there. Well, let's look at the cousin to SO3. The cousin to SO3 is SO2 sulfur dioxide. Again, you can draw the structure for this following the steps. But what we ended up with was a structure that looked a little bit like this. We have a lone pair on the sulfur now and two oxygens, each attached to the central sulfur. So what do I have on my central atom? How many domains do I have? Well, I have a, a bond. It's a double bond. That's one domain. I have a lone pair, that's a second domain, and I have a single bond, that's a third domain. So again, this still has three electron domains. But now one of them is not a bond. One of them is actually a lone pair. So let's see what that does in our simulation. I'm going to remove one of my single bonds. Now, I've got to put a lone pair also on that atom. So I'm going to do that. Now, this is the ideal structure, but in fact, one of the things, and you'll notice down here that it says that the geometry is bent, because it's a bent molecule. These bonds are pushed a little bit out of the straight line by this lone pair. Lone pairs are pairs of electrons, and they push just as much as, well, actually, they push a little bit more than bonds. This angle in here is not going to be 120 anymore, because these bonds are going to be pushed a little closer together. So if I were going to draw SO2 correctly, I would draw the S like this. There's my lone pair. And these two bonds are now at an angle. That angle is a little less than 120 degrees. It's about 117 and a half degrees in here. And the reason for that is, and this is something you're going to want to write down, lone pairs push harder than bond pairs. That's important. Lone pairs actually repel more strongly than the bonds do. So in SO3, in our simulation where we had SO3, we had a bond angle of 120 in here because all bonds are pushing equally on each other. Even if it's a double bond, it's pushing equally on each other. 
when I replace one of those with a lone pair, well now this lone pair pushes on these two bonds more than if it were just a bond. And that makes the bond angle in here just a little bit smaller. They get a little bit closer to each other than they should. And so this is called bent. This is a bent geometry. So we, that's all you have. If we take off another bond and put another lone pair, then it's just two atoms and that's always linear. Whenever you have two atoms, there's just a straight line between them. But what about if we increase the number of domains to four? So here's methane. Here's the way we would draw the Lewis structure for methane. Again, go back and look at your six steps if you can't remember how to do this. There's methane. It looks like it's plus. It looks like this is a bond angle of 90 degrees in here. It looks like it's a cross-shaped molecule, flat, all five atoms in the same plane. But that doesn't really make sense. We have four bonds on the central atom, which means we have four electron domains. All four of them are bonds. Well, how far apart can they push each other in three dimensions? In two dimensions, yeah, they would have to be 90 degrees. But in three dimensions, what would that look like if I tried to put four bonds onto the central atom and then have them push each other as far apart as possible in three dimensions? You get this very strange looking shape here. This shape is called a tetrahedron. It is tetrahedral. Here it is down here. Tetrahedral is the ad adjective form. The shape is called a tetrahedron. And the first thing you got to figure out is how do, how do I even draw this thing? And so I've arranged it in a way that makes it easy to draw. I've got two bonds here that are in the same plane. These three atoms are in the same plane. And then I have this bond here, which is kind of sticking out at us. And this bond, which is kind of sticking back into the plane of your screen. So I'm going to draw methane as close to this configuration as I can. I'm going to put the carbon in the middle. I'm going to put two bonds in the same plane as the carbon. And then to draw the one that's sort of sticking out at me, I'm going to draw a wedge like that. There's a wedge. That wedge looks like it's projecting towards me. And then to draw the one that sort of goes away from me, I'm going to use a little dash like that. That's how I get this shape for methane. Now the bond angles inside a tetrahedral shape are 109.5 all the way around. This is a very regular geometric shape and the interior angle of a tetrahedron is always 109.5. So that's my bond angle in here or in, in any of the bonds in the tetrahedral, 109.5 degrees. Four domains starts out as a tetrahedron. Now what if I replace one of the bonds with a lone pair? We have an example of that in ammonia, NH3. NH3's structure looks like this. If I draw out the Lewis structure, it has a lone pair on the nitrogen and three bonds, each to the three hydrogens. On the central atom, I have a lone pair and three bonds. That's still four electron domains. So it should look like a tetrahedron, except one of my domains now is not in fact a bond. So I have to take away one of my bonds and I'm going to replace it with a domain that is a, a lone pair. So now I have this kind of shape. It looks sort of like a little alien. See his eyes up there? This shape isn't a tetrahedron anymore because it doesn't have the fourth bond. It's missing that fourth bond. This shape is sort of like a little flat pyramid, a squashed triangular pyramid. That's what the name trigonal pyramidal means. Trigonal means triangular. Pyramidal means pyramid. So if I were to draw this shape in three dimensions with my, nit with my ammonia, I would put my nitrogen, I put my lone pair up there, and then I've got these three hydrogens are sort of pushed down out of the plane. One of them kind of comes out at me a little bit, and the other one goes away. There's my shape. See, this is the one that goes away, and this is the one that comes out at me. This is, this is sort of in the plane here. And there's my lone pair on top. This is called trigonal pyra pyramidal. Now the lone pair, remember, lone pairs push harder than bonds. So these lone pairs are going to push these bonds down a little bit more. So instead of 109 and a half, which is what it would be if there was a bond up here, this is now 107 degrees because lone pairs push harder. And this is called trigonal, which means triangular. Pyramidal, which means pyramid. 
because it's like a little flat pyramid, a little squashed down triangular pyramid. Well, let's take another bond in, away and replace it with another lone pair. We have a structure like that in H2O, water. Structure for water, oxygen in the middle, two hydrogens out. We could draw them on either side. Now, if you remember your biology, you know that water is not a linear molecule like this. It's bent. Why is it bent? Well, it's bent because on the central atom I have four electron domains still, two bonds and two lone pairs. And that means that four electron domains are going to start looking like a tetrahedron. Remember, if I have methane, my tetrahedron looks like this. But now I'm going to take off two of those bonds and replace them with two lone pairs. So it sort of looks like a tetrahedron right there, see? But the tetrahedral shape isn't there anymore because these lone pairs aren't bonds. They're not part of the shape. They're just sort of pushing on these. So this is called bent again. And because lone pairs push harder in a tetrahedron, this angle in here should be 109.5. But because lone pairs push, push harder, it gets even smaller. So if I'm going to draw water, I'm going to draw water as a bent molecule like this. Shape is called bent. And the angle in here, each lone pair pushes the bonds together about or decreases the bond angle by about two and a half degrees. So in a tetrahedron, this should be 109.5. If there are one lone pair, like in ammonia, it's 107. And then two lone pairs brings it down to 104.5 for water. And if I want to look and see what water actually looks like, see, here it is. There's my two lone pairs. There's my 104.5 bond angle. It's a bent molecule. And that's essentially it. Those are the only ones that we're going to really need to make sure you understand. Two electron domains, three electron domains, and four electron domains. And you should be able to predict the shape of almost any molecule we've done in class now.